Hi everybody, welcome back to THG Student Webinars. Today we are joined by the wonderful Amsterdam Creative Studio and um, we're here to get our creative juices flowing um, with Sarah and Vinya who are here to talk you through everything about Amsterdam and why you should study over there and how you can success gain a successful career over there as well um, during your studies. Now we're going to be interactive in this session, so we will be doing some polls, uh, some question and answer sessions as well at the very end. So please, please, please do get involved. And uh, we want to hear from you and, and you guys are the ones who are seeking this opportunity. And if you do have questions, please pop them in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen there, and we will get to those at the very end of the webinar. OK, I'm going to hand over to you, Sarah. OK, great. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good evening from beautiful sunny Amsterdam. Um, I'm gonna share the screen with you guys now and we're going to just run through a, a video of uh, Binia and I at work um, with our students in the studio and it gives you a bit of an idea of what we do and how we work. Good times. That was an exhibition, Sarah, right? We've changed yeah. the whole school and made like a boomtown experience out of it. So there were monumental works up there, up to two meters. Um, fashion students had like costumes uh, on show. It was amazing. It was a good time. I remember that very quickly. Yeah. For me, the exhibiting work with the students is the best time. I love it. I love being yeah. busy. I love sharing ideas with them and making their work look the best. And it's so nice to see it outside of their studio space and on a wall or in a space working together. It's so much fun. I love it. Makes you proud, makes the students proud. It's really, it's something. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's so nice. Great. Well, I think we'll leave you there. You've got a bit of a flavor of what we do um, uh, in the studio with our students. So we would like to welcome you guys um, to our How to Create a Distinctive Portfolio. We are Amsterdam Creative Studio. Uh, my name is Sarah Thomas, and I am one of the co-founders, along with my partner here, Binia. Um, I have 14 years uh, plus experience of teaching in the art and design um, area. I have a uh, degree from Campbellwell College of Art. So I am a UAL alumni. I also have a master's from the Royal College of Art. Uh, my specialism was sculpture, but my teaching practice is very broad. And in recent years, I've been focusing more on the sort of visual communication side of things. So I wanna hand you over now to my uh, partner, Binia. Hello, everybody. My name is Binia Tallon. Um, I have studied fashion design in Germany, went very quickly after studying to London to work and live there. And from London, I went to Beijing. That was 12 years ago. So I lived 12 years in Beijing, China, and I founded a school there that you will that you have seen and um, this is where my experience coming from so I have made over I'd say a thousand portfolios I have gotten over a thousand students into uh, good colleges and um, I met Sarah in Beijing so we decided to continue the good success we had in China now in Amsterdam yeah so, uh, you know, we've got experience of working with international students. Uh, I've worked in the UK, in the USA and in China. So between us, Binia and I have a really good idea of uh, different nationalities, different styles of, of working. And we know very much what universities, top universities around the world want to see. So we're gonna share some of our insights with you today. Um, we have a fantastic opportunity for you to meet us and for us to potentially work with you in the future in this amazing city of Amsterdam. Um. <laughs> so let's get started. So your answers are important to us. So as Stavrola kindly said at the beginning of the webinar, we will be running some polls. So we'll be asking you questions, but we also want you to be asking us questions as well. 
You know, we want to know what is important to you, what you want to learn, and what do you want to gain from this webinar. So there will be uh, questions throughout and then a Q&A section at the end. So please don't hesitate to ask your questions in the chat. And uh, yeah, we look forward to learning a bit more about you guys too. So we'll move on. The first question. So what do you want to get from this webinar? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, the poll. Sorry. Yeah, it just came up then. Was it? <laughs> Okay. All fine. <laughs> us to, it's about us introducing ourselves to you and our success that we've had over the years working in education and the creative industries. Um, we've helped, as Binia said, thousands of students achieve places at top universities in the UK, in the US and in Europe. So while you guys are bringing your answers in on the poll, um, I want to ask Binia, what was your biggest challenge when you made your portfolio? But I remember it as a very, very fragile time. And um, I was constantly doubting whether I have enough work. Do, do, do others do like my work? How many, how many pieces of work should I show and which order? So it was, yeah, it was, it was a very, very stressful time, I remember. And yeah. you, Sarah, what do you remember? I think for me, like my biggest problem or issue is um, having too much, like wanting to throw everything at the portfolio and showing every tiny detail and every stage and everything. Right. You know, I, I need to learn to edit back and to be more kind of uh, sparing with the all the information and the images that I give so yeah. that the work can really breathe. Yes. So, yeah. That's it's, a real and isn't it funny, like despite the fact that we have made over a thousand portfolios, every time I make a portfolio, the challenge is a new one. Yeah. So I don't see anyone participating in our little questions. Please, people, answer. What do you want to get from today's webinar? How to build a portfolio, how to apply it to our score or... How to what? Oh, I can't see it. Hang on. <laughs> so the last bit is what will I get from studying at AMCS? At AMCS. So AMCS is Amsterdam Creative Studios. That's us. So um, could you just take A, B or C? So we've got a little bit of a chance to understand why you are in this poll or in this um, workshop. Um, so okay. give us your answers. Please yeah. now press the button. So I think you guys can answer as you're coming, as we're going on. If we um, have a look now at uh, a testimonial from one of our previous students. So I think Sarah was the student that both Sarah and I uh, taught, even though I was, um, I'm a trained fashion designer, I work across the, the whole foundation, as Sarah said before, our practice is very versatile and we do think this is to your benefit. So um, when Sarah, when we asked Sarah to give a testimony for this course that we are intending to do in Amsterdam, she said, I think the most important part here is that she says there is no limits of creative expression with us. And that is so true. We want you to express yourself and whether you draw with your hand your feet your mouth or whatever this is what we are on about we bring the best out in you and she was also a really great student that worked in the kind of collaborative way with other students um, when we did the boomtown festival um, exhibition she was really really um, and very enthusiastic and worked really well with her her peers she was she was amazing but working with her was sometimes really difficult because mm -hmm. she couldn't plan her work and that was like she was so creative and so amazing but the planning was kind of like something that we worked out together with her yeah. and um, to the end when she had her final uh, presentation or her final work presented it was amazing it was a joy of working with her actually yeah yeah Lovely. great student great student so um, 
This is our, our structure for today's webinar to give you guys an idea about what we're going to be covering. So we're going to look at how to get the best education. We're going to also look at how to become a successful creative, because for us, it's not just about being a student, but it's also about moving forward into your career as well and setting you up with transferable skills that you could use in the creative industries or in the wider world. Um, it's also about how to learn professional and sustainable practice to keep you making and to create prolific uh, creatives. Um, and it's also about how to make the most of your study environment. So how to make the most of being a student with us at the fantastic AMCS. Um, we understand, you know, that it is competitive to get into schools um, to, dis to study art and design. Um, we need our students to and we encourage our students to have a personal practice and um, to gain creative experience and showing that in a unique portfolio which we can at AMCS help you to do. This is what we do. We help you students to um, have a practice that is a regular practice where you're drawing daily, you're maybe sewing daily, you're creating um, uh, mannequins on a daily basis or um, uh, prototypes and you're taking photographs. So do everything. <laughs> everything, but everything, everything every day. Every day. <laughs> we really encourage that full time with our students. Okay, so this is the structure. And now we're going to uh, introduce our team. So Binia, who will teach the students at AMCS? So mainly you and me. Um, we've done this because it's been actually a, a benefit for our students because we know you by the time you're leaving, we know you really well. And um, the diagnostic part of it is then so much stronger. We, but we also have a, a range of practitioners and um, contemporary artists that are uh, practicing um, and they will come to Amsterdam to work with our students so to bring relevance to the course and to the to what the students are actually doing so you will be having an insight into the latest design practices and themes and will work with people that you might have heard of before. Great. And um, so a lot of our students are working or studying away from home. So how do we support these students? I mean, we've we've been I have to say we've always had like lovely, lovely uh, students. And because we are working with the students every day, there is um, kind of like a friendship and a trust developed. And so we are not only teaching and saying goodbye, we are also helping the students to navigate around uh, Amsterdam and to, you know, settle into the practice. So every day we are seeing each other and, you know, there is, we are perfect and we are really knowing how to settle into a new city and and even new country we know that very well from our own experience, own experience. Right? yeah <laughs> of course we both lived and worked abroad so we know what that feels like yeah that's super important so um i'm thinking what are the benefits for working with a diverse staff you know with from different pathway specialisms I mean, we had this so many times, right, Sarah? I mean, there was a graphic deal, visual communication student that had to work with me and the student went, Binya, but I don't want to, I don't need to work with you. You're a fashion person. And I said, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to open your practice up and you can express yourself in any way, whether you stitch something onto something to communicate or you film whilst you're stitching it's all about the communication so to answer your question Sarah I uh, I believe we both believe in a cross-pollination yeah. I think a fashion student can learn so much from a graphic design student and a filmmaker can work with a fashion person so I believe that a cross-pollination is really really important so, yeah, and I mean, for me, the essence of a foundation course 
are these fundamentals in creative practice. So whatever your specialism is, you have to have that foundation of, on which to build your practice. So this is what we're really good at. This is what we are experts at, is giving you that fund, those fundamentals and foundational uh, good practices. Great, so thinking now about why AMCS? So why should students choose AMCS? Well, I think, you know, um, AMCS, wait, hang on a second. <laughs> Have you got questions coming in? What's this? You're being distracted. Yes, I thought <laughs> I had a question coming in, but um, it doesn't seem like that. Um, hang on a minute. I have to. Okay, so I'm going to, I think yes, I'm gonna maybe you why go I think students should come to AMCS. Yes. Well, first of all, uh, students will receive an internationally recognized uh, diploma with us. Um, and uh, some of the benefits of um, enrolling onto a FAD course are that we teach the FAD curriculum, and this will prepare students for any uh, international um, university, art college, or school. Um, this qualification is recognized, and um, it also works, yeah, within in any of the creative education systems. Um, it prepares students. AMCS prepares students for further study, but also for career. So we educate creative thinkers and problem solvers. And this is something really important for the growing creative and technology industries. I think about AI. This is all stuff that we um, are very much aware of and that we support our students in. But we make creative thinkers, and that is so important. We bring together international creative approaches and we improve your contextual understanding so that you can create innovative concepts. So you understand the contextual um, placement of your ideas, you understand societal issues, environmental issues, political issues. These are all things that we go through with you as uh, students at AMCS. Because we want to create and make future creative leaders and innovators. That is where we want to get our students. So as I was saying, AMCS is all about you. We are student-focused, student-centered. We work for you, with you. We facilitate your creativity. So as I was saying, you get a foundation diploma in art, design, and media if you come to us full-time and are with us for nine months. We explore various different art and design disciplines. We give you the opportunity to really experiment and explore. We encourage you to take risks and to think outside of the box. And we build portfolios with you. So all of these projects that you do with us then can become a portfolio and a body of work that you can be really proud of. Yeah. And we have... Uh, from our success rate, 97% of our students get into the top universities and art colleges around the world, and they go into many different pathways and many different subject areas. I mean, you'll be able to meet some of our old students, even in these colleges. We have, meanwhile, we have students coming back to us and um, visiting and talking to the new students and you'll be able to benefit from that as well and I have to say as I mentioned before you are in a environment where you work every day you make connections for life I mean our students they are now studying beyond just our course they are studying, they're seeing each other, they are working with each other. It's amazing. So we are really creating, yeah, a community, a new and a, a new designers and artist community. Yeah. So thinking now about the creative process. So what do you think is the most important part of the creative process? We want to know what you think you need to have or what you need to do to have a successful creative process. So let us know what you think. Poll, press A, B, C, or D. We didn't have any answers on the first poll. Let's see. Let's, Let's hope. get some answers now. Yeah. 
So the most is... important part of the creative process, I, you know, being curious, being open to new experiences, being open to not being afraid to make mistakes is the next one. And D is being self-driven and committed. What would you think is most important part of your creative process? Any answers? Can't be shy, people. It's not <laughs> that we hold you against. Or is it naff to answer a question? Yeah. We will answer it. We will ask you a lot of questions. When we are teaching, Sarah yeah. and I, we will never usually speak up, to, up from above down to you. We are introducing the briefs. The briefs are going like four to eight weeks. We'll have an introduction. We show our PPT. And then we ask you questions. Yeah. Because ask, answering, ask, asking questions brings us closer, makes us understanding you better and your needs better. So just now press yeah. your button and give us some feedback. That I think if I was having to answer this, this question, I would say all of them are uh, the most important things. These are all parts of um, the creative process. That are really so. important. You can't have one without the other. Yes. So let's move on. I want to show you now our mission. So as educators, our school missions are extremely important to us. They are what we believe sets us apart from other providers, other educators. They are there to benefit not just the students, but also us, the staff. Mm -hmm. um, at AMCS, as we've been saying, we provide a holistic ed education that really supports our students' needs, as well as providing uh, students with a comprehensive and an up-to-date and current creative experience. So we're just gonna go through our missions. So, Sarah, I mean, really, what do students learn with us? What is it we want to teach them? Yeah, so we want our students to be independent. Uh, we want them to take responsibility for their creative uh -huh. and their work. We want students to have a bit of grit because we encourage problem solving. We encourage mistake making and mm. we encourage students to overcome diversity. So we also work with students on their people skills and their professional uh, communication skills. We um, encourage and develop respect to the tutors, to peers and uh, to the industry. We really work with well-being, and we like to also help our students to improve their English skills and most importantly, their creative uh, language skills. Yeah, that's really, really important, right? Yeah, definitely. So, Binia, what will students be expected to create with us? I mean, first of all, I cannot point out the importance of making a sketchbook. And the sketchbook doesn't need to be polished or beautiful. It's just such a genuine source of you, you, the student. And um, our sketchbooks, I mean, students work every day on their sketchbooks when they are with us, right? And the sketchbooks yeah. build the ground to the portfolio. When we build a portfolio, we are using sketchbooks. We are going to bring your sketchbooks and photocopy this, do this, do that, you know. So the, the sketchbooks are a very, very important thing. Um, we make portfolios. Of course, we make portfolios. It's a lengthy process. I think making a portfolio, we use up to two to three months to make a portfolio, to make it person. And um, personal and then we also encourage you and that is like through workshop rotations so we set up workshops stations and you're rotating and um, so we encourage you to do a lot of material and uh, ex idea experimentation experimentation is so important being playful doing things making things it's really 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 nice um, we also do focus on, and I know it's not always everyone's favorite, but it's the reflective writing. 
I mm. mean, if you know why you do things the way you do things, then you are so much more ahead. And then you know yourself where you are standing. So for us, this is a really, really empowering tool. You are in charge of your work. You understand what you want to do. Yeah. We right. also work on, oops, we work still on final outcomes, right? Which means sometimes we are accepting, accepting something that is the best of what you can do. But the further we go in the course, we want to have outcomes that are fine, refined, that show your skills, that show that you're really, really good. And last but not least, Sarah mentioned it, most fun times are there. <clears throat> so we are doing fashion shows when there is hand in. We are doing, um, you know, exhibitions. We are doing crits. So exhibiting yourself and showing yourself to your uh, kin and later on in, in, in your studies is super important. I have poll results now. Yeah, so I was going to say, I see. Oh too. my God. Look, so wonderful people. Thank you so much. So 42% not mo that have said it is important to be curious and I cannot agree with you much more. You need to be open for new things. That's amazing. Um, and I wanna, yeah, I think going on to the next slide, this is a perfect opportunity because being curious is about thinking, right? Yes. And um, so we uh, let me just give you like a little more feedback. It's also about like, some of them have said it's open to new experiences, right? So, yeah, these two things are really, really getting together and you are on your right way. That's amazing. So please all come and study with us. <laughs> you show us the right attitude. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us feedback. OK, so moving on to the next slide, Sarah, what, why have we chosen this slide? It's amazing. I've refused to be what you want me to be. Yeah, this is why is there so much of a focus? Why do we want students to be thinking they're creatives? Why do they need to think? Yeah, well, I mean, for, th for us, the thinking process is so important because it's about problem solving. It's about, as you said, the reflection, being able to understand and look at your ideas and think and be be well informed, right? This is what we need. We need students. We that to be, right? and to, yeah. And to have, oh. uh, it's such a fundamental, important aspect hmm. of our course and of creative, of creative. But is it, is it like, is that thinking just sitting there and thinking and going like, I don't know, because I sit there and go like, I don't know what I'm supposed to think about. <laughs> it's not that we're going, you sit down now to think. It's more about like a discussion, right? And yeah. so what are we talking about in the course? I mean, we have, we read There's many, yeah, many different topics that we discuss on the course. We could be talking in the morning about consumerism, in the afternoon about uh, feminism. We could be talking about politics, LGBT rights. We could be talking about human rights. We could also be talking about economics and globalization so all of these all of these topics are open for discussion in our course and uh, whatever the student brings to us we will discuss with them and I've, I want to say one more thing I think in China it was so interesting because you know we would talk about we'd have a student going like oh uh, I want to talk about feminism no oh, all right we can talk you know I'm 50 you know we can talk but then Sarah came in and then everyone came in to have their opinion voiced. And I think we are hoping that now you are listening to us in many countries and every country someone has or we have different ideas. And this is what implies thinking as well to understand how does another country think about that? How do other people look at this topic? So that's what we encourage massively in the course talk to each other think with each other right and that's interesting so we're going to move on to another nice uh, segue the global aspect of our mission at the school so why would a student want to study in Amsterdam 
Oh, guys, you got to have to. I mean, Amsterdam is an amazing city. I've moved here and I'm, I've fallen in love with it. You know, it is it has such a rich art and design heritage. I mean, I want to lock myself into the Rijksmuseum. It's it's beautiful. It has so many aspects and so much inspiration. When I walk down the streets, I hear so many different languages. There's Italian, there is Spanish, there is some German, there's some French here. There's a, it's super international. But the good thing is everyone speaks English here. I mean, you can go into the tiniest shop and you go, hi, can I, you know, people are super friendly. People are open. And I think it's also very, very cool what's going on here. I mean, you know, um, it's 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 an amazing city. So um, you you will love it. You will love it. And I have to say, I feel quite safe. And we have spoken to younger people and they all say it's an amazing, safe city. You can see their testimony on our Instagram if you want. There is some of their voices on, um, yes, our Instagram account. I think it's also, I mean, we are literally in the heart of Europe. I mean, traveling from here to many other cities, it's just a stone's throw away. And um, yes, this is part of our course as well. We want to take you once a year or twice a year, depending on what the majority of the cohort wants. We take you to places. We want to visit with you London. We want to see what's there for you in London. Oh, let's travel to Italy and see what's going on in the Salone in Italy. Let's go to Germany and see a documenta or whatever. So these travels, cultural travels, will allow you to see Europe and the Europe that you might not know, because, I mean, I didn't know much of Holland and I grew up in Germany, you know, but it will allow you to see Europe in a different way from an art and design perspective. And these travels will be part of your project. So you have an advantage to the others because you have seen it live and you have saw and you have experienced not only from a screen, you have been live there. Yeah. So that's super enough reasons, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> And that also feeds into the well-being. And um, so this is also very important to us. Um, it's about giving you professional and academic skills. It's about giving you a practice that is sustainable, that is um, a holistic uh, approach. So learning for life, not just learning uh, creative skills, but also learning communication skills and and all of that stuff. And as we said, we work with you on your creative language and your self-expression skills. This will make you a more successful, uh, creative human being. Yeah, and I think we take you serious. I think this shows that we are taking you serious. For mm -hmm. us, it is not pressing you into something, not going like, mm -hmm. you want to study fashion design, you have to do this. You yeah. show us the way and we guide you. Yeah. That's our philosophy. And I think this is included in this well-being aspect yeah. of it, right? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. So with that in mind, we want to know what pathways you guys are interested in. So uh, what would you want to do if you came to AMCS? Would you want to do fashion and textiles, fine art? jewelry and 3D, visual communication or moving image. These are all pathways that we provide. And remember, um, we like diversity and we like cross-pollination. So you could be into more than one thing, that's fine. But we wanna get a flavor and an idea about what you're interested in. Mm, it's important. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, yeah, definitely. Let's move on and then we can see um, what you guys are interested in. So thinking about our solution now. Um, so Binia, um, what does AMCS do <laughs> that is different from other FAD courses? 
Well, I think we said this before, but I cannot say it much more. Um, we have a very small cohort and we want on purpose, we want to work very, very intense with our students. So small class sizes means 20, maximum 30 students. Um, like at Central St. Martins, they have also very, very small class sizes. That's where the brilliance and the strength of a student comes at. We are also very, very good with the diagnostics. So I can tell you in my 12 years, I heard everyone going, I want to study at this college and I want to study fashion design. Yes, let's find out how you work. And whilst we are working with the students, I could say that, or we could discuss with the student, I could say, you know what, you are not someone who wants to churn out 80 designs per day. You yeah. are so much into detail. You're so much interested into the surface of things. Why don't you look into like fashion print or why don't you? So we are, it, the small class sizes allow us to diagnose and help everyone to find the right cause for them because it's not I didn't have the courage back then to apply it straight away to Central St Martins it's a very very specific college and um you know now I would have no doubts but back then I wasn't so you know we help not to find only the first solution we also find alternatives and I think that's something that is very special about us yeah so what should um why should students do a fad with us at amcs yeah that's a good question because you could go anywhere right mm -hmm. <laughs> but i mean first of all it's because of us <laughs> and secondly it's our students have gotten really really good degrees i mean most likely they were in the top sections of their degrees and you know that is really really something that some want to see that they are ranged or able to apply to top universities with top diplomas right yeah. it prepares them for their degree so they're more likely to be ready and uh, they'll be uh, working at a higher level right from the beginning. So they're more likely to get that first class degree. Uh, and I think it's also like it's a full time course. Mm -hmm. We are working with you from Monday to Friday. And I know it myself. <laughs> it's so easy to go, oh, Monday, I don't go. Oh, Tuesday, I don't, you know. With us, it's full time. There is like, there is a great energy in our studio so i have some pathway here sarah oh We're yes i see percent interested in fashion and textile brilliance love it yeah. Good girl, but we love it um drama we have jewelry great i'm a, i love teaching jewelry it's really really nice and 62 percent visual communication yeah that's really Super cool nice. yeah we love visual so much visual communication has changed so much over the years it's not just any more layouts and you know books and no there is so much more to discover so visual communication is a great subject yeah. four colleges alone that do that in the uk um, right. And we have a great number of moving images as well. So that is also important. Moving image is everything right now. Thinking about Instagram, thinking about, you know, fashion people. You will have to move so, so uh, work so close with the moving image people. So, yes, good, good choice. Thank you, people. So now thinking about our resources. Um, so, yeah. I Yes, Sarah, we are working. I mean, that student here is, she was great. She, she went on to Central St. Martins and um, she's doing some screen printing here, sitting on the table. That was how, she, how much she was engaged. What f facilities have we available for our students? Yeah, so for us, a really important part of, uh, of the AMCS experience is having your own workspace. So each student has their own designated studio space where they get to work and really develop their ideas and kind of take ownership of the studio. 
it's nice you come in and you have your own desk every day right your yeah. work is there usually we encourage you to hang up hang. lots of things and inspiration so you look at that every day so it's a growing museum your place and Sarah why does why do we actually why have we decided to use external facilities with yeah. our students well, we think uh, we just are so impressed and uh, we love that Amsterdam is full of creative um, workshops and technicians and artists and designers. Amazing. And we want to make the most of that to collaborate with local craftspeople to help our students learn skills from them. So we have access to RISO printers, to screen printing and printmaking workshops. We have access for our students to 3D printers, laser cutters, all of the latest technology, why not? Why don't we do this and use these amazing resources? And it's, I mean, we've visited them and I tell you, I wanted to, I wanted to study again. It's like, I want to work in here. It was amazing. And these people in these um, labs are usually super skilled and they help you. And I mean, you know, my heart was going for like the Aga Lab where there was a possibility to screen print at two meter by one meter, 20 big screen. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, what we can do here? This is amazing. So, yeah. yes, they're all really professional. And, you know, there is no point of us teaching you everything um, that every skill you have to develop a like for a certain skill we work with you on concepts so your concepts become really really strong and you learn to communicate with someone who is maybe not a studied uh, furniture designer but can make very well furniture yeah. and we'll have a discussion with them so this is your opportunity to you know understand the real life isn't it Sarah yeah that's true so our partnerships will provide students with the following access to up to up to date technology specialist support from technicians you'll get experience of working in leading industry facilities and you'll be working alongside professionals um, it will help you to improve your english language skills and particularly focusing on creative language so thinking about again a testimonial this is a student of ours michelle um, she was a fantastic student. She started off, she wasn't so confident, um, but we really helped her to build her confidence. She thought, and I think her parents probably encouraged her to uh, pursue graphic design for her degree, but we felt that she was so um, uh, talented in the moving image. So we encouraged her to apply for animation at LCC and she gained a place there and is absolutely loving it now. And I think in her testimonial, it's really interesting because she says that from working with us, she was able to overcome her insecurities and she no longer has to feel panic when she's uh, faced with creative problems in, in briefs and, and tasks. <laughs> she's set yeah so because, really great yes she, and I mean you know I think sorry to interrupt you Sarah but I think you we, maybe we have to share this when you study BA in the UK or any other course you have maximum 10 minutes mm -hmm. to see your tutor and you gotta have to sell yourself and be really really good right and that yeah. raises panic and you oh, god what do I say we with us you learn this right so yeah. I think that's that's bringing us to the next point right yeah so there we are talking about like the you know creative critique so creative critique I love it I I so see a great great importance in this it is the experience and the knowledge how to present yourself yeah the group to a group or even in one-to-one -one. so we have various forms of crit uh, critiques that we um expose you to so it can be that you are paired with not your friend someone from the other pathway and you introduce your project to them they mark you so you know where you are standing it could be that we are 
presenting, everyone is presenting their project to the group. So you learn to speak up, you learn to present yourself. Um, have I forgotten something? No, no right? Everything you got. So mm. we're going to ask a question um, before we start looking at portfolio pages. Uh, what do you think is the most important thing when building a portfolio? So we want to know if you think it's show your idea development, uh, show your personality, or show projects that look perfect. Or the last thing is consider formatting and layout. Okay. I'm curious to see what you are answering. Yeah, let's see what comes in. So yeah. let's move. Should we move to our first? Yes. Let's move to the next one. So now here we have obviously a portfolio page from a student that I taught, the fashion student. And therefore, I am not talking to you about this page. I'm asking Sarah. Sarah, what do you think is successful in this page? Yeah. So for me, I think what's really successful are the layering here in mm -hmm. there is the texture and the way that these two things create a 3D form, because obviously this is a garment that's wearable. So that's really important to get that idea across. I think there's real definition in color and texture and pattern. Um, I can see a leading line. It's making me move across the page, which is really great. There is a good balance as well of images. You've got also primary and secondary research here that's been shown. And I get a real kind of sense of inspiration and the creative reaction um, that the student um, mm -hmm. is putting across in their work. It's also lovely the way the models are, mm -hmm. you know, shown or the drawings, right? They're very, yeah. very individual. They're not just standing there like as if they were nailed against the wall. So it's yeah. very, very individual expression, isn't yeah, there? There is. So, but with that in mind, is there anything you think that could be improved? Oh, yes. <laughs> Is I'm happy, but I think you know I can see that the student, or I know that the student had paid an immense amount of attention to stitching, right, and, yeah. and design details. So I see a buckle there, and I see the stitching. What I'm missing is I see two images that might be inspirational images, but I don't see any fabric manipulation of her own. Mm. And I would always advise someone to put in your own fabric manipulation. What is the stitching looking like? Where is the stitching sitting? How thick is the material? Is the stitching thick, et cetera, et cetera. So I really, really miss her own fabric exploration. And I'm also thinking the garment itself, it's not really resolved. And that's a typical mistake of many, many fashion people that they are drawing, they're designing. This is work in process, but a garment needs to be solved. Is it a skirt? Is it a shirt? Is it a shirt and a skirt? Is it, what is it actually? And so that those two points are my yes my biggest kind of like critique even though I like the page and I, I like that image and I liked what she did there but the design is not visually clear enough yeah okay well, we move on Sarah Let's move on um, I've, I've got some poll okay um so great 53 percent of you think to show idea development <laughs> Right, you are so good. Show your personality. 33% think that that's also really, really good. And I am so happy that only 13% have said show projects that are perfect. You are good, guys. You are good because no one wants to see perfect projects that fell down from the sky and are perfect. They want to see your personality. But no one, and that slightly concerns me, said consider formatting or layout. Yeah, so you'll all learn something today. So that's great. So um, Vinia, I want to ask you about this page now. Um, what do you think is successful? Well, you know, I love, love, love that it seems like I can pick out pieces. So there is a real 3D um, element to it. I think it also shows 
progress. So mm -hmm. there is from casting to mold making to chain work to in the bottom even 3D printer work. So it shows that the student is really, really heavily into experimentation. Yeah. From a visual point of view, um, layout, it is, it's, it's a quiet layout, it's balanced, it gives me like a room to move around. Um, there is a slight flow from the left to the right, um, but it's very good balanced and what I like most of it is the sketchbook feeling yeah it gives me like a real feeling authenticity of the student and how the student might be I also think what's really good about this is that I have a drawing we talk about that later but I also have a visual so my sample and the size of the pieces even though she's played with scale pieces that are very small are bigger here I can see it brought into relation to the body, which is mm -hmm. super important for any jewelry designer and any fashion designer. Yeah, great. So what do you think, Sarah, what, what should the student improve? Well, I think that there is uh, missing a, a construction, uh, technical drawing element to it, I think is missing from this. <clears throat> I think the drawing in the left-hand side is maybe not being presented in the best light. So we're not getting the kind of uh, tonal um, elements to it. It feels a bit weak compared to the rest of the page. So I would maybe think about balancing those two elements out further. Um, let's move on to the next page. So, so Sarah, this is this is a student that you have taught um, yeah. and Thai. And um, I mean, I want to ask you, I've got my own opinion, but I want to ask you, what do you think is successful in this page? Yeah, so for me, I think it's like really visually coherent. There's a representation here of idea and outcome development. Um, there's short and concise annotations, which I really like. We don't want too much text. Um, there's a really good representation of scale, so showing both detail and the whole piece. Um, I like the use of uh, personal typefaces. This really comes across in their personality. Um, but I'm interested to know what you think could be improved. So for me, it's like... Um... I want to see what, and this is the scale, right? I want to see what this is. Is this a big book? Is this a small book? So where would this sit for the customer? Is it a magazine? Is it a fold out? How big is it? So basically the application of the outcome to the audience. Yeah. And I'm also, and this is something I really love this student and I remember, but on the right-hand side, He's showing making, he's he's showing a process. I would completely take the writing off because the writing is just explaining what he's doing there. Yeah. We are visual people. We do want to read significant parts, but we don't want to just being written about what I'm doing here. So precise um annotation is really important so I would have taken that annotation out okay great so let's move on to the next so we're going to show you a couple of examples now that maybe aren't as strong so Binia what are the issues with this page oh god I can't even start it's so chaotic it's so much on there it gives me like a clue of making and so it's a chaotic layout the images I don't understand. I still don't understand what this page is about. Is it experimentation? Is it material analysis? The images are either too small or too big. So yes, I don't understand this page. It's inconsistent. It's got inconsistent use of shapes. Sometimes the corners are round. Sometimes the corners are uh, and a different. There is no grid here different heights I mean yes it's a chaotic page yeah so layout is really important here right yes. and I think what needs attention is that maybe like I was saying earlier there's too much stuff on this page it needs to be spread out it needs to breathe better 
Um, I also think that the images, the, the quality of the photographs lets the work down. So the student really didn't take the time to photograph their, their work and their experimentation properly. Um, but fundamentally, I think you've already sort of said this, what does this page communicate? There is too much text, it's too descriptive kind of text. And I think the experimentation could be much better presented on a busy page, like the last page, you know, I think there isn't a, this, this kind of development going on that should be there. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, Sarah, I'm asking you again. I remember that student. Yeah. What, what, what's the issue for you here? Yeah, so thinking about balance, for me, there isn't the sort of balanced layout. Um, I think it's also lacking space around the images and around the text. It needs to breathe better and more. Um, the inconsistency in the image quality, some of them are sharp, some of them aren't so sharp. Mm. I think there's also a flatness to these images mm. where the work looks like it is layered, but it doesn't come across in the images. Mm. And I find the typeface doesn't really complement those images. So yeah, that's for me. That those are the issues. But what do you think needs attention? Yeah, I mean layout first, right? And and to say I'm also a, a person that happy to have more space around an artwork. Be mm -hmm. confident. Put one thing. So I would split immediately. I would split this page into two pages, yeah. and I would you know have it have room around what the artwork. And then yes, if you want to show your progress or your your thinking which is shown on the left hand side let allow me to see more of it allow me to you know dive into there and see your thoughts so i like the contrast between outcome and and you know development but mm -hmm. i also think um I'm a huge fan of color and it seems that color is really important in this work so when you use color Give an explanation, say, you know, however you do it, it doesn't need to be boring, but give an image where you've uh, taken the colors out or so give the viewer a clue so we can, when we look at those pages, understand your color choice. It's super, super important. Yeah, definitely. Okay, great. Let's move on. Um, so what do we do? Where do we help our students go? Well, I mean, you know, we are expert in having successfully putting these uh, put students into these colleges to name UAL, big, big thing. Goldsmiths, also amazing college, Glasgow School of Art, Kingston fashion is amazing in Kingston. I'd say is the better course than, but you know, um, uh, <laughs> oops. So, I mean, Kingston is an amazing university. We also will want to broaden your horizon and to take you out of the UK into Eindhoven, which is just around the corner from Amsterdam, Alto University in Finland. So there is so many universities that we, we want to work towards What's with you, Universität der Künste in Berlin, super cool, Vivian Westwood used to teach there, now it's Hussein Shalayan. So, I mean, you know, we, we, we are experts in getting you prepared to go to the best schools in Europe. Yeah. So thinking about a uh, portfolio. So uh, as part of our, our, your education with us at AMCS, you will create with the support of our expert team, a unique portfolio of work. We have experience of quickly turning students around with little um, experience in the creatives and we get them ready for degree level. We have students uh, gone into a variety of courses. We know what courses want to see from prospective students. We yes. know what the degrees want to see. And we are now going to show you some of the tools that we use when making portfolios. So this is a real insight into what we do at AMCS. So I'm a big fan, and this is all across the pathways, design principles. If you want to create a good page, use these. Yeah, definitely. We want students to tell a story, to show their creative process. We know that this can be complex and can involve several different stages. So show us how you progress through your stages and your ideas. 
We want you to reflect on skills, processes, and methods. Uh, Sarah, sorry, but what can you reveal from your process? I mean, I want to show my best in my portfolio. Why do I need to show what didn't go well? Yeah, well, I think um, anyone who's looking at portfolios on a degree course at a university looking at students work will want to see the student making mistakes and learning from them and doing something new and experimenting and trying a different process. This is all part of it. They don't want to see the final only final project perfect final piece. No, they want to see that you've really worked hard and you've developed your ideas. You're taken for that almost. Mm, I would definitely. Say. You know, yeah. you're taken for solving problems. I love this image. So this is drawing, Sarah, right? You did do this. I love yeah. it. It's a drawing in a, a drawing in um, wire. Why is drawing so important in a portfolio, Sarah? Even though I know myself, I'd go like, oh, this drawing is not nice. I don't want to show it. But that's yeah. when we are coming around and going, put this drawing in. This is great. So yeah. why is drawing so important? So, I mean, drawing is a way that you as a creative person can represent the world around you. It's how you interpret and see the world. And that is what people want to see from students and they want to see in their portfolios. And they don't need to be perfect, right? They no, just definitely need, not. It's a, it's, a, it's a creative reaction, I would say, yeah. right? Yeah, totally. So a reaction, talking about reactions, problem solving in response to briefs that we set our students. The world needs innovators who can think creatively yeah. and who can solve problems in society, environmental issues. These are all things that are out there. Um, the strengths and skills that creatives have are not just recognized in the creative industries, but in the wider world. So we're mm -hmm. setting you up for a career in any field. We have friends who work at Netflix, not that we are saying you have to work at Netflix, mm -hmm. but we have friends who worked at, uh, work at Netflix because they have creative thinking patterns. They studied something creative, but went into the in, into a different industry. So once you're creatively trained, you can solve so many problems in this fast changing world. So, I mean, we want our students to be independent, right? Independence is the most important thing, yeah? We want you to be able to be self-motivated and committed to your own practice, meaning you have to have fun with what you are doing. Your yeah. portfolio should show this as well. You have to show who you are and that you love what you do. But loving, hating and loving it again, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a process, right? Um, you know, I also want to encourage everyone, show what your interests are. If you do in fashion, don't only show that you're interested in fashion. Show that you're looking at movies, show that you're going to museums and maybe show that you're quite good in making something out of wood or clay or whatever, right? Yeah. So yeah. you have to show your broad interest into everything. Yeah. And I just want to say here, I have experience of working with students who have done a creative foundation course with me, but have gone on to do a, a medical degree or a business yeah. degree, or even a, a student who wanted to become a policewoman. I mean, we encourage students, even if they're not wanting to go on to do creative practice, use the year that you get like a gap year and come and do yeah. some creative stuff with us and some creative problem solving. Um, so new and moving on to the next thing we talked about this right at the beginning exploration of different skills materials and processes don't be restricted to your set pathway be open to experimenting with many different processes learning varied skills will broaden your creative practice in such a positive way yes and my all-time favorite mm -hmm. sketchbooks <laughs> they are just such an authentic source of you and you might find yourself putting one slide in your um, portfolio where you show um, how, how your sketchbook looks like so you're flicking through your sketchbook you're filming this and it's it's a joy for us even for us it is a joy to see someone's sketchbook yeah. So thinking about how you represent your work, we talked about um, image quality. So it's super important that you show your work 
in the best way. So you use natural light, don't use flash, take clear and simple photos on neutral backgrounds. Also consider detail. You want to show every little bit of it, but you need to make sure that the work is shown in context. You need to uh, show the scale and maybe the use or how the viewer or user interacts with the work. These are all really important things to remember. And no bad shading. <laughs> yeah, no bad shading. <laughs> so English, I am not a native English speaker and I so know the importance of being able to show that you can express yourself professionally in English. Just think of the globalization. You, you guys are born into a century where everything is global. So you are requested to be able to express yourself professionally in English. So out of our experience, your English level, because we speak to you every day in English and we are talking about deep things, your English levels can move up to two IELTS points. So that's a great advantage. Yeah. So when you're doing your portfolio, you also need to think about editing it. I've said this a couple of times, and this is one of my areas that needs to improve for sure. So make sure you don't show everything, you know, make sure that you curate and tell a story um, through your work. We don't want to see lots of titles and we don't want to see a title page. That's for sure. Oh, the waste of portfolio research space. is my favorite when I read yeah. research. Yeah, but <laughs> use titles of your yeah. research, right? Yeah, we can see it's research. We don't need you to tell yes. us, but we want concise and brief explanations. So not just images, but yes, we want some text and, and some uh, annotation there as well. So um, we are we have a variety of portfolio of a flex, flexible sorry flexible offers. Please look at them. We understand that it is not easy to make a portfolio, but we are there for you, and we can only encourage you come and work with us. Um, if you don't have an existing portfolio yet or work because we want to see your work before we admit you to the course, we can give you an assignment that is not a problem at all before your interview. Yeah. So AMCS, Amsterdam Creative Studios, is inviting you to join the course with us to work hard to produce high quality creative responses to set problems and that you are part of the group that we have set before at participating with your peers and out of all things have fun yeah foundation is the funnest year ever in your whole life and that's what we get told all the time from uh, students that we've worked with they say that the foundation year is the best year for their creativity. So come and join us. But it's also Amsterdam. their first job. It's your first job also. Don't forget this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hard work, but fun. Yes. Okay. So um, we are welcoming applications from students, all students, 18 plus, um, we want to work with students who have or haven't had previous creative experience. Um, like we said, you can submit a portfolio or we give you an assignment because we're open to any kind of student that wants to get creative. Our fees are 15,000 euros, but that is full time for a year working with us one to one in the studio. We do also, as Binia said, have other um, course offers available. So we have the full time in person course offer. We also have a three month offer and we are also doing intensive personalized uh, portfolio clinics with students. So check out our website and you'll find out more information or just get in touch with us via the website with the contact sheet. So we are open for applications right now and they are filling up. So hurry as spaces are being filled. We understand because we've done it ourselves, moving to Amsterdam can be challenging. So those of you that apply early will benefit from our partnerships with uh, student hotels in the city and also our relocation agents are there to help you 
settle in and find everything you that you need. Um, we are going to send you guys a follow up email after this webinar. So look out for that in your inboxes. You'll get more information from us there. OK, so. <gasps> We have talked so much now yeah. and I'm missing the interaction. But now it's time to ask some questions. Not popular oh. with students, we know. <laughs> yeah, Rola, over well, to thank you. you guys. It's been super informative. My goodness, such a such a great session. We do have some questions here for you, actually. Um, let me kick start. First one says how to build a portfolio. Well, we've done that, we've gone through that one um how affordable is it to study in amsterdam and um, could i work alongside my studies but i'm not sure if it's a full-time position well i think this is a good question we have someone on our instagram who answers that question i mean it is not the cheapest city to study there but it's down to budgeting and we are always always encourage students to work as it is a full-time course, you'd need to find work that's from four until later, which may, might, might need media or on the weekends. But yeah. we do show great um, understanding for this. And if we can, we always try to get uh, good work or good jobs for our students. So meaning placing them in the industry or something. Yeah, we have connections here in the city, so we can help students place them in uh, in employment that is relevant to their studies. Yeah. So that's possible. How long can I stay in Amsterdam after my studies? That depends on the country of your origin. <laughs> yeah, it really depends on whether you're EU yes. or non-EU student. Yes. We have uh, relocation experts that can help you navigate the visa situation and and support you with that but if 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 you know non EU then you know if you look into study here for three years then that's absolutely possible I think yeah perfect um we do have a question about messy art portfolios uh, can we not have a messy art portfolio <laughs> messy art portfolio I think as long as you're you're presenting your personality and your individuality, then um, messy portfolios, okay, that could be that could be possible, you know. But it's about being consistent and it's about considering the layout. So if you wanted to come across the aesthetic is messy, let's say I'm not sure what messy really means, but yes. um, yeah. But I think as long as your your Sorry. your personality comes. Yes. Across, then that's fine, you know. I mean, for me, it's like it's a it's a way of expression, right? If you think you want to present yourself messy or re revo revolutionist or whatever, do it. But it's the story, and it's yeah. what is in the portfolio. How do you tell your story? Yeah, Can content be... for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense for sure. Um, and there's a question about accommodation. Is there any help when finding accommodation? How easy is it in Amsterdam? Yes. So we we have to say it is challenging, but therefore, as we said before, the early bird catches the worm. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, good connections to hotels here and to student hotels. So in our of in our research, we hear that you know it takes. A quarter to uh, three to six months to find your dream place to find a place that you want we have a our relocation agent that can help to find the dream place or we are having the hotels limited hotel spaces where the students can come and land first live there for a certain amount of time and then move into flats together or whatever they want to do yeah, so these are things that we've considered and that we're working with experts on so we can help the students. Perfect. And we have one last question here about digital portfolios. Would you recommend a digital portfolio for digital arts if you offer this? Uh, I'm all I'm... for your art digital right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they are. But I think I kind of get what you're saying in terms of should I just show digital work? I yeah, would say... I no, I would say you need to show all kinds of different types of work. So different mark making techniques, not just drawing or producing digital work, 
but think about it. They really want to see, um, even on digital course, on gaming, I've had so many students go into gaming, games development and courses like that. And what they want to see is uh, they want to see that you have those practical skills, that you are curious and that you are um, mm. uh, recording the world around you, whether that's through drawing with pencil, drawing on your iPad or drawing with your feet on a massive piece of paper on the floor. These They want to see a diversity of processes, not just uh, flat digital work. No. They and want if, to see texture and form and shape and all of if, that stuff. If anything, there mm. is a focus on this now as everything is digital, everything mm -hmm. is experienced digital, yeah. the focus is on making and the yeah. ability to make because that's how you develop work. Yeah. I, I always say I think with my hands. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Me too, I talk with my hands. Yes, um, you do yeah. talk and sing. <laughs> with we my do have one question, actually, that can just be on the segue of that, which is quite interesting, yeah. about AI. Um, I'm kind of concerned about the development of artificial intelligence. Are you integrating the new AI to your program? Yeah, this is so important. This is a really interesting question and so current. I mean, daily, Binia and I are talking about AI. Yes. I, am, <laughs> I am talking to my friends in industry so much at the moment about AI. I'm talking to graffiti artists about AI. It's everywhere. And I think, yeah, of course, it's something that we are going to have to embrace. It's something that we are going to have to utilize and use in our own practice. And I think it's interesting because that's a really good link to the previous question. You know, AI, anyone now can write a piece of writing using AI. They can make images using AI. So, so really universities want to see that students are still actually um, using their hands, are still actually practically using and developing their, their creative skills. But saying that, we also are very much aware of the digital landscape and of AI and how we can utilize it to the best of our abilities and enhance our own personal creative um, uh, language. So yeah, so it's, it's something that we definitely discuss. It's something that we want to encourage our students to use. And it's something that we're definitely thinking a lot about. But use wisely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Not instead of their own work. No. Use it to, you know, promote or use it to whatever. But I think we would ne never encourage a student to use AI to simply just do artwork. We would encourage them to use this as a default as a, as a tool know. like yes, as a tool, as a tool as a, as or an experiment or yeah. something experimentation mm -hmm. yeah totally but we know that it's changing the landscape we know that it's changing the world mm -hmm. and so yeah we are very much aware of that yeah i don't think it's going away anytime soon no it's definitely something not. we have to live All with right. it's got, it's i know Outside. I know. Anyway, guys, we've come to the end of our Q and A. There. Um, thank yeah. you, guys, for your questions. Thanks for watching and holding on. Um, for yes. the hour mark. Um, all the information is on the screen. If you do want to follow, and uh, if you can get in contact with AMCS, they are there for you there. Um, to get in touch. But if there are any more questions, please do send them through. We'll forward them on to um the wonderful Vinya and Sarah. And you guys, any last words of inspiration for future artists? Oh, just embrace the world and <laughs> you know it's Joy. Just come to Amsterdam it's amazing uh, and I think it is nice to I mean I, I'm I can't wait because we've been preparing this course for a year now I can't wait to start working with you again because working with young people is something that I and Sarah we love so much and yeah. yes being creative together and and working and developing and and one thing I can say is like when you leave is the time when Sarah and I usually go, <laughs> how they're going off and work with someone else. So we grow together, we work together, we love and hate and, and, and it's it's a wonderful time actually. So I hope to see many of you with yeah. us soon. Definitely. Thank Get you for all your time, right? And yeah. well done for listening for so long. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Wherever you are, good night, good evening, and good day. Um, have a lovely evening. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.